Okay, from time to time, I see people asking me about BMSs and what they could use for something other than the traditional voltages like 12 or 24, uh, 48 volts, right? Sometimes they want to use like bigger battery packs and stuff. And so they're always asking what is out there as a BMS that is configurable and that could be used for a large battery system. And this is the one that I'm currently using right now for the vehicles, right? This is uh, is called the Lithium and uh, is developed by a company called Thunderstruck Motors, uh, but it is also sold by a bunch of other dealers like EV West, right? So this is the master unit and then this is a satellite unit, right? And so this, each one of these will handle 24 cells. Uh, it's got two of these, uh, chips that can handle uh, 12 uh, cells, right? So there's got two, this is 24. So there's another, so this this right here system can uh, do 48 cells, right? But you can keep adding more satellites and you daisy chain them on these little connectors. Uh, and the only thing, so it's highly configurable. You can you can pick all your parameters and stuff. Uh, that's the good stuff, right? And uh, I think this is like almost four hundred dollars, four fifty or something. Like that. And these are two seventy five, so it's it gets to be on the expensive side. But if you have to manage a battery pack, uh, a large battery pack, and you need a lot of configuration, a lot of uh, this one also speaks can, and so you can uh, connect it to other uh, devices that can control this and can deactivate it and it can trigger stuff. Uh, also, it can you can monitor it. They have a little screen for this one. Also, it comes with all these little pre-made connectors, um, pigtails, right? That you can use to uh, connect to your to your cells. It also has thermistors so that you can do uh, monitor temperature and stuff, right? So the only downside is that you'd have to use uh, a terminal application to be able to use it, right? And so if you're not too familiar. With computer stuff and a terminal screen and a terminal program or whatever uh, it could be a little bit confusing that was the case for me at the beginning i found this to be just a bit too hard to use for the average person or someone like me right but uh once you get it then it becomes kind of easy so let me show you an application where i already have this installed in a vehicle and then uh how the terminal screen looks like all right, so here is a vehicle that has a net gain motor, the low voltage, right, which is a 96 volts nominal, but 111 uh, nominal battery pack. So it's 30S, so five of these modules, uh, the Tesla modules, uh, Tesla Model S modules that are 6S, right? So 30S, and what happened is that two of the modules uh, during the build, the, the way that that happened, uh, two of the modules were ruined. Um, the connect the BMS that we had in here was connected. You know, someone disconnected it that didn't know, and then connected it, and they didn't connect it the right way. And so, as a result of that, they killed the BMS, and then that also killed two modules. And so now we have to replace two modules. So now two are from one pack, and then three are from another one. So now we installed a new BMS system. It's in here. And now I'm checking, this is the terminal screen, right? You use a, a, a bunch of applications. One of them that they suggest to use is called Putty. And right now I have it on and I have it charging. And so what you do on the terminal screen is you just type, um, uh, is it help? Let's see here. Yeah, so you type the command help and then it shows you all the possible commands that you can use. And first, is, it shows you the show commands. So anything you want to see, right? Show the version of the, of the program, the configuration, the map, the cells, the LTCs, which are those little chips, stats, and then thermistors, right? And so you can, those are all the show commands. Then there's also set commands, uh, and that's where you set everything in there uh from voltages to limits right ldc low voltage cutoff high voltage cutoff uh, low voltage cutoff delay uh high voltage cutoff delay all that stuff right and then you reset 
config and stats and you enable sort of stuff like balance. Um, a thermistor's loop, it has a loop uh, thing that you set it so that if any event of high voltage or low voltage event happens, then it opens, uh, it closes a loop, right? And so that's what I'm using. I have a little um, external relay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm, I have it connected now to the another a loop on the charger. And so the, the way, the reason why I have that is because what I wanna do uh, and test right now is the feature where if any of the cells overcharge, right, cell groups overcharge, then it's supposed to stop charging. It's supposed to tell the charger to stop, right, so that it, you don't run into a condition where you overcharge a cell uh, to the point where maybe there's a fire or, you know, whatever, you damage or whatever. Yeah, so, so, so that's what we're going to do. So right now I'm going to put show. Uh, I can't even spell show cells. That's one of the commands that you can. And here we go. Look, so those are all the 30 cells. And most of them are at 4.1. There's some at 4.09. So there's a little bit of discrepancy. And you can see that a couple of them are higher. Look, 4.10. And then there's some that go at 4.11. So there's two modules that have 4.11. And then the other ones are 4.09. So there's a little bit of discrepancy there. And uh, that's probably because those are the new modules. And they're slightly higher than the three older modules that were in the car already. And so the BMS has a, a, a lot of work to do right now and balance all those cells. And it is, right? It's discharging, discharging. Um, so, it's, so it's currently balancing. But what we can do right now is we can go and set the high voltage cutoff to something like just above where it's at right now. So let's say 4.1 one two let's say no that's already oh 4.1 uh, yeah 4.12 yeah if we do 4.12 then we should be able to make the charger stop right now the charger is currently charging and so you if you if you do set uh high voltage cutoff high voltage cutoff hvc right and then you put four point one um, two. Boom. So that's set. Um, then there's high voltage cutoff clear threshold. Uh, if you want to see what the I might have to redo that one because it, it might conflict, right? So show stats. Yeah, show stats. And it should tell me what that's set at. Now that's stats. Show config. Okay, so there we go. So high voltage cutoff clear it's 4.2 um i should put it at 4 4.1 high voltage so hvcc set hvcc high voltage cutoff clear um, and I'm gonna put 4.10. There we go. That way it won't interfere. So show cells. So there we go. As soon as any of those cells hit 4.12, there's uh, there's some that are really close. 4.118, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1
right so that's like really close then the charger should stop and the light on this uh relay should turn on right and then this should tell me that there's an event a high voltage cutoff event so let's wait and see how long that takes oh it literally happened seconds before after i stopped recording but look it cleared again so the uh the cell i guess the cell group that reached that point uh went back to the clear setting and then it started charging again so let's see if it goes up once again but here it is it shows us uh bms1 c17 so where is it at c17 is right here can you guys see that so it tells you right here that one c17 is in high voltage cutoff so here c17 it's 4.119 there it is so as soon as it hits 2 1.2 it should do it again okay there it is it hit it the thing turned on the light started blinking and then the the light on the relay turned on which means it's activated so it's cutting power to the charger right it's it's open the loop of the charger and so now this thing gives you a high voltage cutoff alert so okay so all i'm doing is basically uh, creating this event so that i could make sure that everything's connected correctly and that it is actually working right now i'm going to put this battery pack to balance and i'm going to put the charger and to charge all the way up um so that it's completely balanced it's probably going to take a couple of days to balance and then after that we set the uh the high voltage cutoff high like somewhere around 4.3 4.3 and a half something like that so that um it only ever activates if the cells are really like out of balance and then one of the cells hits that voltage uh but it doesn't hit it you know just on the, on the normal uh event of charging you know the regular charging uh, cycles basically so so there you go this is one of the ways that you can uh protect your battery packs right if you got something that is large more than 24 cells or up to you know 24 cells yeah i think it can go up to like 200 cells or something so so this is you know configurable and um it's modular so you can keep adding more of these modules um i guess in the future i'll show you the little screen because this is not the most efficient way to do it right once your car has an event has a thing a trigger then you have to pop up your laptop connect and stuff and so yeah sometimes oh there it is it just uh, it lowered the cell lower in voltage enough right it settled back down to activate the charger again and the reason is because i set the uh the high voltage cutoff clear very close to the high voltage cutoff threshold um and so right now it's gonna start so i think in real life i think that that clear is gonna be a little bit below it's going to be at 4.2 as opposed to 4.3 uh, and a half right so if those cells uh does lower then uh yeah it's gonna it's gonna start the charger again but then once the threshold is hit again i don't know maybe this is what i was gonna do on the top uh just to prevent the batteries from being you know overly overcharged